So we're going to pray. And as usual, we just want to be uh, as, you know, as reverent as we can as we, you know, approach the mercy seat, the throne room, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, mighty God, King of all kings, ruler of this earth, divine God and Lord of all, we just want to praise you and give you thanks for another. Lord, we praise you, Lord God, for your majesty. We thank you, God, for all your great power is still alive and still glorious, Lord. We just want to thank you. We want to praise you for keeping us and for being ever present in our lives. And as such, God, we know we are truly blessed just to have life. Lord, as we are about to go into another session of your word, we pray for manifold blessings. We have expectations, Lord, and we have needs to be met. We have desires in our hearts, and we pray that your word, Lord, will meet each desire and touch every need and speak to, oh God, every unknown and known circumstance. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that your divine favor will rest upon us. Speak through me as your servant and bless us now. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we have uh, concluded for this season the master class. Hope it was a blessing. Hope, uh, you know, some or all of us were inspired, uh, particularly as we ended with the Holy Spirit and uh, we began to explore uh, some real touching aspects of Father in Son and Holy Spirit operating in our world today and just the dynamic nature of the Spirit. And uh, we touched on various uh, work and uh, functions of the Holy Spirit as it relates to us being believers. And one of the questions, uh, as I guess as I was uh, we were, you know, conversing, speaking together, and we were dialoguing the word. And one of the questions actually has spurred today's topic. Um, I believe it was the prophetess who, uh, and you know, for the for for those who are listening, we we call Shannet the prophetess. Uh, I I I believe. If it's if it's by divine order she has that prophetic office, then uh, to God be the glory, uh, she has been called that. So uh, we just go along, uh, and we 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 pray we claim it done in Jesus' name. So we wait for the prophecies. But the prophetess um, asked a question last week, which I I ended up finding a little bit more interesting than just off the top um, in the explanations that I gave last week. And so as a result of that, uh, I was kind of led to do a little bit more, uh, some research, I wouldn't say deep, deep diving. Um, but nonetheless, um, we, we are going to be talking about prayer today. And uh, so I pray that you have your books and pencils ready or your, uh, you know, all your writing information. Bible study is study and it's about taking in information. And so our topic for today, let me go to my share screen, is simply that, prayer that speaks. Prayer that speaks. And uh, I, as I said, the question was asked last week, how do I know my prayer language? 
and I kind of found the statement a little bit, maybe I would say odd, because as a Christian for several years, um, perhaps I've heard it, but didn't pay too much attention to it. This issue of the prayer language um, was, hmm, I would say, okay, I've, I've never heard of the term put in that context before. So I, I guess because you were talking about the Holy Spirit last week and we were speaking also at one point about speaking in tongues, then it just flowed into the conversation of what is this subject of prayer language. And so I did some reading and I'm just going to be sharing some of what I read. And, you know, we just go as the Lord leads with this one. And, you know, we, we try to unearth. So the prophetess, I hope you're ready. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I'm just ready to go. Yes, the lights are on. Great. So you're ready to go. <laughs> Everything is all, 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 all done and ready. <laughs> this looks like it's your topic. Yeah. So you're on fire already. <laughs> All right. So let's turn. Before I, I give you some of, of the internet stuff that I got, very few, but statements that I got. Let's turn to the to Romans chapter eight. I'll be reading a couple of verses from Romans chapter eight. And we'll be reading from verse 24, Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, from whom, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. The last verse, what shall we say then? What shall we say then to, what shall we then say these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? And we're ending with a question mark. 
generally end your statements with a question mark, but we're ending with a question mark here. If God be for us, who can be against us? Prayer that speaks. I want you to, to, to take note just almost at the very beginning um, two, two words of importance are mentioned. And those two words uh, are spirit and hope. Because when we think about, when you think about prayer, you have to, you have to recognize that praying in and of itself as an activity is really a spiritual conversation. It's, it's a conversation um, between you and God. And that conversation has to have some basis, has to have some meaning to it. It has to have some purpose. It has to, uh, you know, it, it must focus around something. You don't just pray for praying's sake. Or I, let me say you should not just pray for praying's sake. Um, prayer is, is your, your lifeline of communication. When all else fails, pray. When it seems as if you don't have the answers, pray. And I may dare say, when you have the answers, still pray. Because it means that you are always trying to ensure that your, your, your progress, your process, your, your life's work and worth all will culminate to something. But this issue of the prayer language, uh, I told you that I did a little bit of um, research. So I just went to the internet I, and I did uh, some, some reading on some areas and I gathered some information um, to enlighten me personally about this aspect of this prayer language. Many of you in, the, in the, um, the study may already know this far more than I do. Uh, so I, I, I probably just be reading this for my own benefit. Uh, so, so what I learned was uh, that one, one, one site said Christian prayer language is a spiritual gift from God. That's what they're saying. You know, these things are not arguable for debate because, uh, and perhaps we will pause and do a little debate on this, or we do it later on. But this is what they're saying. The Christian prayer language is a spiritual gift from God. So the, it says this includes both speaking and praying in tongues. Uh, the reason it's called a prayer language is that you are speaking in a language you do not know. Only God knows what they are saying unless they have a translator. So if, 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 I'm, to, if I'm to go, and I'm putting on my glasses for this now, if I'm to, to you know, dissect what that is, uh, and just flesh it out, then basically prayer language then is really praying in the spirit. That's, that's basically what I would um, conclude what a prayer language is. Um, and, and perhaps it's a term now that has more I guess what would it you say? You know, more, more, more. I'm trying to find that word. 
it, it's akin to saying it's modern day. So, so, so the prayer language is a modern day term for praying in the spirit. So, so I can understand the issue or the concept of praying in the spirit because yes, yes, there is such a thing as praying in the spirit. Uh, I have had, I have had experiences where I pray and I've started prayer as you would start in uh, the tongue of your native English. And so you pray and you pray as, you know, you're praying in your native language, but your prayer becomes so, uh, it, 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 it begins to move through stages where you reach to a point where you are praying, you're praying and you're praying, you, 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 you sense the presence of God and you are your your praying moves to another level and it can move to another level in in your natural tongue where you're just praying out of your spirit uh you know it's not just recited words no it's 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 praying that is just just flowing from the the boils of your spirit and 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 you're you're speaking about things and 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 your heart is pouring out and and it gets to a point where you begin well i have had the experience let me put it that i have had the experience where you begin to pray in tongues and you're praying in tongues and 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 while i am praying in tongues and i've and this has happened why in in look at i've had it where i'm at home in in prayer Sansa and I, we are praying, and I'm praying, and it gets to that point. Or I've prayed at church uh, during the prayer meeting, uh, and it and it has happened, right? So I can understand this modern day terminology, prayer language. If they're saying it's praying in tongues, then yes, there is such a thing. But the question as to how do you know? That's a different story altogether in terms of no, because when it comes to the spirit, as we will now discuss, there are certain things that they are just spiritual, that even though you're praying in tongues, you yourself cannot deduce unless, unless the spirit speaks to you, and unless the spirit reveals it to you, which is also possible. It is it is all the more possible. Your spirit can also reveal to you what you are speaking as you are, as you are led by the spirit in this prayer language. It is possible. So let me clear that up. But there are also other aspects as it relates to praying in the spirit or praying. And while you're praying, you, are, you will end up praying in tongues. So let's do a little bit more uh, deep diving. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. Let me see if I have it. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god for no man understandeth him howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries mysteries in the greek uh is the greek word is mysterion, and what it really means is uh something that is not revealed it's hidden so the Greek word says shut up, it's shut up. It's, it's or in, in fact, it, it just says like shut your mouth. So it's in essence then, it's a mystery because it, 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 is not, it has not been revealed. If I don't speak out of my mouth, you'll never know what's in my mind. 
So it's a mystery. So it shut up. So, so what Paul is saying here to the Corinthian brethren, the Corinthian saints, and I found something very interesting as I was doing this, this presentation and this preparation, that a lot of things as it relates to the, the believer is all based on, on sometime, a lot of times on the environment in which the believer is and the, and the time and place. And we'll go into that a little bit further. But here it is, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, unknown meaning you, you, you do not recognize this, this language, you do not recognize this. What is being said is foreign to you. You have absolutely no idea what it is. So it may be, another language or it may be unknown but it but it is tongues that is not known it says that you are not speaking to men but unto god why because obviously god is the one who will understand the tongue it is unknown to you because of your mental faculties you your your as your your human spirit does not necessarily comprehend because i've spoken in tongues heard myself speaking don't know what on earth is being said but i know i'm i'm hearing this different language this different uh utterance that's coming out but i don't understand it myself my spirit doesn't understand it but it says for no man understandeth him so when you speak in tongues, unless somebody has been given the revelation of what you're saying, no one knows what you're saying either. How be it, it says, in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. No, in the spirit. So in the spirit realm of what is happening in the environment, in the circumstance, you're speaking mysteries. So, so no one, no one can necessarily just come up to a podium and say to me, "Oh, just start praying in the spirit." Uh, I, I don't know if, if on a command of somebody saying it from the rostrum uh, or from from you know where, wherever they are to a group of people, that it just clicks automatically and everybody can just turn on that tongue thing and um, it just goes off. Um, Today, when I was thinking about it, um, you know, I, I, I thought about somebody with, yeah, you, you just give, say, for example, you, ju you just give somebody a, a, a semi automatic rifle and say, just pull the trigger. Uh, and that's what some people think tongues is all about. You, you just give them a, a, a big weapon and you just say, pull the trigger. And you pull the trigger. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Everything just, and you, you they don't, you don't train yourself even to hold the weapon. Because you know it's a dangerous thing. So, so you just pull that trigger, that, that recoil alone can lick you in your head and throw you on, on the ground. So I don't know. Um, then there is another aspect of the trained person who will get the weapon and, and who knows to line up their target and, you know, whatever, and, and make a proper shot. But we're not talking about killing off. Uh, thank God it's guilty verdict. Um, but so, 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 so we understand, we take this and we simmer over this verse, right? Because there are certain things that we must not, I think personally, as Christians, we, we, we must mature about it, that this, this aspect of tongues and the spirit is divinely ordered. It has to be divinely ordered. And we'll go more into that. It has to be something that uh, I, uh, uh, if, it, if it is being done, it is being done under the, 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 the command of God, by the Spirit of God, for the glory of God. But if we take this verse at its value, we understand, we understand that it is obvious that you can speak in an unknown tongue. And when you're doing it, people around you won't understand, but God will understand. And you are speaking mysteries. You're speaking things that are, are 
in the spirit realm. You can only way you can deduce what's happening is if you get into the realm of the spirit. And this is why prayer is also a matter of seeking answers. If you notice, Paul, Paul stresses and, and speaks also uh, as he speaks to the Corinthians. He is addressing a particular situation. And as he speaks to the Romans, he's addressing a particular situation. With the Corinthians, he's, he's really addressing the aspect of public prayer and what are the courses and discourses and, and, and what, what, what makes sense in the public environment. When he speaks to the Romans, he's talking about what makes sense in the private environment of your spiritual life. And that's where we're going to start, in the private before we even go to the public. All right, so we spoke about Mosterian mysteries and we appreciate the unknown tongue as an aspect of speaking. But I will give you what are my views on prayer. And so these three points are the present, I, I labeled it the presenter's view. Uh, so it's just, it's my opinion. I did not deduce this from uh, any other commentary or did I pull it from any resource. This is just my own spiritual view on prayer. Three points. One, prayer should be considered as a fundamental part of your worship. Because prayer is a spiritual activity. It is praying uh, is a conversation I'm having with an unseen God. It is a, a dialogue that I am doing with my creator. It is a, a, you know, a, a dialogue of, of many different things, but it is centered around the spirit man. It is dealing, it, it encompasses my feelings, it encompass, encompasses my thoughts, it encompasses uh, my moods. Um, and, and, and so when I move to the point where I understand that I'm talking to God and God is a spirit, my prayer has to be a fundamental part of my worship. My prayer uh, has to be um, in sync in terms of, of, of how I present myself in worship. Number two, prayer is a spiritual experience that begins in the natural. Uh, and, and, and for me, prayer begins in the natural. Why? Because I'm using audible tones. I'm using my natural language that my ears can hear the sound of my voice as I pray. So that's natural. It begins in the natural. Uh, it, may, it may move to, to other realms, but it begins in the natural. It may be, it may, it may be, be, be spurred, per, spurred is probably a wrong word. Oh, number three explains what I was, I was just about to tell you. So just skip what I was about to say and look at number three. It is driven by a need to experience divine revelation in the sphere of human existence. That is what drives prayer. Even if you look at Christ, when Christ was on earth, he, he many a times would draw himself aside from the disciples to pray. And he did that because he wanted to communicate with God the Father. He wanted to, to ensure that in his human existence, he was experiencing divine revelation. All of our earthly life has to be channeled into an experience that is divine. 
because the flesh will go after the things that are the flesh that is natural the flesh will gravitate to all of the things that it's used to that's normal that's how it was created but for for the spirit man whenever we become believers bible believers we have to be driven by another engine that has to come from the spirit and as such it means then that we are seeking divine revelation i want in other words i want god to put a stamp of approval on things that are happening in my natural life i want god to put this stamp of approval upon the next decision i'm going to make the next move i'm going to make uh the the, the next encounter i'm going to do um the, the, the next business I may want to undertake, the next adventure I may want to go on, uh, the next um, situation that I am dealing with on the job, uh, in my home, um, in my marriage, uh, in my family. I want to experience divine revelation in my human experience. And that's prayer. Prayer is prayer is the is the avenue that pulls this together but what does what does paul say paul paul says that i i have some problems paul is saying i i i have some problems really that's what he's saying because of my human nature and my 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 susceptibility and my uh, proclivities and you know the things that I gravitate to and my my mental capacity uh, I have some problems and as he addressed the Romans he identified this crucial problem as it relates to prayer. The crucial problem is this. Let me go back to my slide again. Uh, no, I think I've, I think I've, 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 I've gone there. The, the weakness is in Romans chapter uh, eight, verse twenty-five or twenty-six. So likewise, the spirit helpeth our infirmities because, because we know not what to pray for as we ought. So I need some help. I need some help because I have some weaknesses as it relates to my prayer life. I have some weaknesses even before talking about praying in tongues and prayer language and understanding uh even without going into the gifts just the simple aspect of trying to touch god in prayer i have some weaknesses because one I don't even know how to pray as I ought to pray. And what it means by that, for we do not know what to pray about, meaning the specifics of our prayer as it relates to the unknown. No, no, let me clar let me clarify that before I get back to this slide. Let me let me let me clarify. There are some times when we know the normal things in life that we pray for. Father God in heaven, we pray that you will bless your people. Uh, and and there, there are some normal things we can recite during prayer. But when, it when, when we are to deal with the all-encompassing aspect of our, our, our life as it relates to specifics, I would dare anybody in this in this uh this bible study tell me that you know exactly how to word those specifics what to tell god how to tell him uh, how, how to express what you want to express specifically 
Because if you don't have all the information, you don't know exactly how to pray. For example, some things that you pray about, some things, the, the purpose or the agenda of the prayer. Why are you praying? Oh, Lord Jesus, I want to be delivered from hard life. What is hard life? How do you know in what you consider to be hard life is not God processing you for the next step of your life? So, so, so that's what I'm saying. When we formulate our prayers and our prayer, our prayer circumstances and we are going before God, we have some weaknesses because we don't know exactly what it is that we should pray for specifically. Because sometimes the prayer is born out of the flesh. The prayer may not be born out of understanding all of the, 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 the circumstances as it relates to what you're going through. Sometimes we are just praying out of our pain. So we are praying because we're going through a certain painful period and the painful period drives us to pray. Sometimes we are really praying, right? But the praying is not hitting all of the points. And believe it or not, brethren, that's okay. It's okay. I'm not here saying that you are wrong. Uh, because the fact is, if you just don't know, you just don't know, <laughs> right? We know not what we ought to pray for. If you don't know, if you don't have a knowledge of it, you can only pray from a particular perspective. And generally that perspective is cultured. It is cultured based on how you live. It is cultured based on what you feel comfortable about life, how you feel comfortable about life. It is cultured based on your safety zones. So some of us have some safety zones that we stay in. And we're not going to, we, we know we not going to move from those safety zone any way, which way you take it. So I don't need to pray about driving at 80 miles an hour because I am not going to drive at 80 miles an hour. I'm going to drive at 40 all the days of my life. Right? So you don't need to be, to, 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 that's your zone. But in all of, in all of the, the, the encompassing thought. The reality is, as, as believers, we do not have all the information about circumstances that we are praying for. So sometimes we are going through situations, and it may be, it may be a month long situation. It may be two months long situation. It may be a two year long situation, and you are fasting and praying and still the word of god says sometimes we don't know how to pray as we are the second thing about not knowing how to pray as you ought is is we don't know what we should pray about in the terms of i want to and i want to i want to context that in the sense of the specifics of prayer the specifics of the circumstance. I remember um, when I first came and I was in, uh, I, I was not in BC, I was in Alberta for a couple of months and I was just going through what I thought was an ex, uh, a, a real, like you, you've been thrown into the fire of, of, of trials. And I'm praying, through the situation that Lord, you would help me. I'm praying that Lord, you would just see me through. I pray that Lord, you would help me in this environment. And, and I'm praying positively. And there's nothing wrong with praying positively. But the issue is, I don't know the full scope of what God is doing. And this is where we go to next. 
because sometimes we are praying about some things, but God is doing some things through what we're going through. And as we are praying, we are just praying from a limited sphere of knowledge about what we're going through based on how what we're going through makes us feel. So we pray and we direct our prayers in, in that context. And, 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 and so we, we, we don't know what to pray about, chiefly because in the entire scope of what we're going through, we do not know the entire will of God. We don't know also the prevailing circumstances of what we're going through. Sometimes the enemy that you think you're praying for to deliver you from the enemy is really your friend. <laughs> is the, the person you think is the enemy is your friend. And how is he? And sometimes the enemy that you're praying for is really an enemy, but the enemy is placed there by God to be a friend in the sense that if he, he he or she has to oppose you, to move you into the will of God. So, so, so the entire subject matter of praying and, and in, interceding from us now, because there's another aspect of the intercession that we're going to talk about. As we pray and as we, we and in our terms, intercede uh, or we pray to God. Uh, let me use that right word. Because intercede is suggesting that there is somebody on behalf of somebody else. But in our terms, we are praying to God. So we are praying for a particular answer. And in all of that, the Bible also says we don't know how we should pray about it. So we don't, we don't know what specifically we are to pray for. And we don't know the specifics, how to articulate those specifics in terms of articulating the request to God. I remember Daniel, when Daniel was praying, and uh, for those who remember the prophecy series, we, we came to a point where he was praying, and, and I think it's Daniel 9. So if, there are two things I would like you to, 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 uh, to, to just jot down in your notes. One is Daniel 9, I believe it is. Let me go and find. I'm going ahead of myself, but I'll get back to it. Uh, Daniel 9, I think, where his prayer, when he was praying. I want you to just take a note of that. And, and also for your, your, for your reading study, go back to do, and read over 1 Corinthians 14. Some very important food for thought uh, in, in these two chapters. Right, so Daniel 9 and 1 Corinthians 14. I bring up Daniel because when he was praying, he was praying on behalf of Israel, and the Bible talks about he set himself and uh, he made uh, his petition, and it, it, it describes several different activities that Daniel did as he made his petition before God. He spoke, he asked for forgiveness, he 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 made supplication on their behalf. He, he interceded as the prophet man in the stead of Israel. And at the end of the evening oblation, the Bible says, the angel of the Lord came to him and said, No, Daniel, I've come to give you understanding. Because he was praying, he was praying, but couldn't understand why Israel was going to... And from the start of the prayer to the end of the prayer, which is the evening oblation, then the angel of the Lord came unto him. It says, Gabriel, the same man that I saw in the vision, came and he says, I have come to give you understanding. So he articulated his prayer and he articulated the specifics of that prayer. And he, and he got the result at the end of the prayer. He got the divine revelation at the end of his prayer. So prayer requires intuitive knowledge. Prayer requires intuitive knowledge. For we know not. If it means we know not, then it means then that we need, there, there, there is some measure of 
knowledge that is required when we are praying. And as we ought, meaning sometimes we don't know at what point we should be praying. Because, brethren, there are times when we really should be praying and we are not praying. So, so, so as we ought, is suggestive that at the very moment of the necessity, sometimes the, sometime the thing that is a need in your life, you should have been praying about it three months ago. Sometimes this thing that is a need in your life, no, you should have been praying about it from last year. Sometimes this thing that is a need in your life, you don't need to start praying about it yet because the time of necessity has not yet come. So, so, so you're praying out of season or you're not praying in the season of the time that you need the divine revelation. So, so, so you don't know how to pray. And as we are, meaning you're not, you're not even in the seasonal time where you need to be praying. It's a serious thing, you know. Because you don't want to waste, you don't want to waste those precious moments when you're interceding. You don't want to waste, and, and not that at any point in time prayer is ever a waste, but as it relates to specifics, as it relates to what you need to, to pray about, as it relates to the how and the when, it is important to know at what point at what point? And here is where we get the help. We get the help from the Spirit. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth these weaknesses. So I'm going to now go back to my slide. The Spirit helps these weaknesses in prayer. And in prayer, the Spirit helpeth. The word help it there means in the Greek term to lend a hand together with and at the same time with one. That's what help means there in the Greek expression. So it's, it's, like, it's like somebody who's doing an activity and here comes another person seeing them in this activity and now joins in and gives a hand to help them in the activity. But notice. The first thing that jumped out to me is that you are in the activity. So, so if the spirit is helping you across the weaknesses we have as it relates to our prayer life and how we should pray, the first thing, my God, the first thing has to be that we are actually praying. So, so, so ain't no need in you getting any help to do something if you're not trying to do something if you get what i'm saying so so the spirit help it notice the spirit isn't taking take over you know they have the term spirit take over that may be in another context right but as it relates to as it relates to this breakthrough that we are seeking through our prayer as it relates to this breakthrough that we are seeking in the natural as it relates to this breakthrough that we want to see happen in some specific areas of our lives because yes there are some specific things that we are we are seeking the lord about and approaching the lord about we also have to be praying And sometimes the praying is not going to be one time, two time. Sometimes through the entire situation, you have to also be praying. It, it has to be sometimes constant. Sometimes the prayer isn't necessarily a prayer on your knees. It's, it's a praying in meditation. It's in meditative thought. It's in, it's in just speaking to yourself in the car. It's, it's in just talking to yourself at your desk. It's in just sitting down while you're in the kitchen or while you're preparing the dinner uh, and you're just speaking and you're talking and it develops into prayer and you're praying over the circumstance. And here at this point, the spirit of God comes in and begins to help. Why? Because it begins to make 
intercession. It begins now to do a couple of things that we cannot do from the spiritual level. It begins to plead intercession, intercession in the Greek term, one of it is to plead on behalf of someone in trouble. So here it is now, I am going through a certain situation and I'm praying to God about it. And the spirit comes in and lends a hand and pleads in, in the spirit realm on my behalf. Not only is it pleading on my behalf, but it raises the level and intensity of the prayer. Sometimes, and so this is how now, sometimes when you are praying and, and you are, your, your spirit, your spirit becomes real and, and invested in, in, in what you're doing, really caught up in, in the circumstances of the moment and you're burdened with sorrows and, and, and your spirit becomes overwhelmed and you're praying and, you're, and, and, and now you begin to feel a different level. I don't know if anybody, if, if you're in the, in the, in the, you know, the group and you know, you have felt that different level, you can probably just do something, send it in the chat or something, put it in the chat, they say, put it in the chat. Um, that sometimes when you're praying for something and you, you really reach that level that is a little deeper than just talking, it becomes a point where the intensity of the prayer gets higher it, it and here is the spirit the holy spirit that is interceding on your behalf what the holy spirit also does in the prayer it aligns the prayer with god's purpose because sometimes when we're praying we're praying and all of the the the, the scope of what it is that we need to pray about we do not fully know all the scope of what the devil is trying to do in the midst of the circumstance we do not know the bible says we rest not against flesh and blood but principalities and spiritual wickedness powers in 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 high places and so the spirit makes intercession because it knows what is happening in the high places it knows what's going on in the realms of the spirit it knows who is planning your demise that even though you don't know you're praying sometimes you're praying you don't, you, you don't know who is a friend from who is the enemy you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but the spirit that knows what's going to happen in your tomorrow goes and makes an intercession on your behalf it aligns your prayer with god's purpose because the reality is we are people of purpose we are driven by purpose every outcome in our life is an expression has to be an expression rather of god's purpose we are not just living for ourselves everything that has that has materialized that we give god glory for is as to be rubber stamped by his divine will and divine purpose the spirit comes now in the intercession it does a level of pleading that goes beyond words. That's why the Bible talks about with groanings that cannot be uttered. If it is a groaning that cannot be uttered, it is not a because that is uttered. It is not something that you are hearing. It's spiritual, spiritual groaning. Spirit, it's on the spiritual level. So hence why I, I, I make the plea as one of my, my presenters view is that praying is a part of your worship and it is a spiritual experience. Because it has to be spiritual in order to touch a spiritual, a spirit God. And so the solution, the solution then of all of that verse the solution of all of that verse comes down to this one thing 
and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Because here is the next thing about how we order our prayers. There is a there is a physical external component that drives the prayer and then there is the heart what is my heart saying is my heart really in what i'm praying about you know sometimes you pray about something but your heart not really in it you pray you pray you pray, you you're praying for some deliverances that your heart not really into it because if your heart was into it because after prayer there, there is a certain there's a certain measure of faith that has to come with your praying. There's a certain measure of seek and ye shall find that is encompassed in prayer. There's a certain level of knock and it shall be open unto you that is involved in your prayer. There's a certain level of, and when the Bible talks about knock in the Greek, it really means like a keep on passively knocking. So if you imagine yourself standing at the door uh and god is on the inside uh of of that door and you're on the outside and you are knocking and you know god is on the inside you keep on knocking if him don't answer you know he's on the inside you don't just walk away from the door because you know there's no other door to turn to if god is on the other side of this door of my circumstance i'm going to keep on knocking and Knock and it shall be open unto you. So he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The solution of prayer always has to deal with what is the will of God. What is the will of God in this circumstance for me? What is the will of God in this circumstance? Uh, of what I am praying about. It, it, it seems like a great pain to me, but in the pain of the circumstance, the will of God wants to teach me patience. In the pain of the circumstance, the will of God wants to teach me how to rely on him. Sometimes we pray for more, but the, the reality is God says, it's not more you need. What you need is to bless me with what you have. So, so, so like the five loaves and the two fishes is enough. You don't need 5,000 fish. You don't need 5,000 loaves. What you need is to bring what you have to me so I can bless it, break it, multiply it, and you'll be surprised that what you have can do far more than 5,000. If I gave you 5,000, you'd have made a mess of the serving. Some people would have went away hungry if I gave you the 5,000 loaves and the 5,000 fish because you still wouldn't feed everybody. But if you bring five, I'm going to make sure that every need is supplied. Why? Because the will of God is paramount. And God is about supplying needs according to his will. Because it's all good. 8.28, and we know that all things, not some things, not some things, but all things, all pain, all circumstance, all setbacks, all defeats, all victories, all when it looks like it's not about to happen, all things work together for good, but it doesn't work together for good for everybody. To them, that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Let's look at now the writings to the Corinthian church. And this is where we're gonna, we're on the downside of our presentation because we want to touch about this prayer language stuff or for the modern day term, prayer language. Uh, and and what Paul has to say, no, because in as I said before, you know, it, it's always contextual to, to examine 
what Paul says to one group of persons as against another, because he's always dealing with a circumstance as it relates to different individuals. In Romans, he's dealing with your, your personal prayer, how you articulate your prayer as a Bible believer. He comes to the Corinthian church and he realizes he has to address them from the perspective and the standpoint of how they are dealing with prayer from the public domain, especially as it relates to gifts. Because you know we have them persons in our church, you know, you know we got them persons when, you know, we, we, we got some really people when they pray, they take over everything and it's going, 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 going. We got some folks like that. And we got some really, we, we, and, 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 and they, I'm putting everything out there. We got some very anointed, spirit-led people to when they pray, they shake heaven. And you can feel it. You can feel the power of God moving in the environment, right? And you can feel people being delivered. And you can feel people being healed, right? And you can feel people being blessed. And all of that is being done uh, by the move of the Spirit. But here Paul wants to address some specific matters as it relates to praying in public. Specifically, it relates to gifts and praying in the Spirit or praying in tongues. So we go back to 1 Corinthians 14, 12. 1 Corinthians 14, 12. So we're going to put it in context now. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So that's the context of, of all of 1 Corinthians 14. Whatever we're doing as it relates to gifts, whatever we're doing as it relates to the move of God, it is not for the person with the gift. It's not for the person who has been blessed with the gift. It's not about you. It's about the edifying of the church. So he says in 13, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he might interpret. I go down to verse 14, and it says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. But my understanding is unfruitful. And what he's saying here is that if I pray in an unknown tongue, no, no, we had established before that we that that is you know something that is possible. When we talk about this quote unquote prayer language, modern day stuff, you can get to the point where you are praying in an unknown tongue. But what's the result of that? He says, my spirit is praying. Remember, we identified from, I think, verse 2, that you're praying in the spirit. You're praying to God, not men. So your spirit is praying, he says. But two, the praying is not beneficial to anybody else but you. So in the public sphere, when you're in the public sphere and you're praying, and you're doing public prayer. Now, let me not let me not say that the spirit can't. The, the, a yielded believer to the spirit when you are praying have no control over what this, over what God will do in your in in your in your prayer and and move you to the point of praying to the degree where you are praying in tongues. But understand this: when it reaches to that level, you are praying to God. You're praying to God. Unless through the Spirit, other people are connected with what is going on, they get no revelation. They get no, there's no benefit. Unless the Spirit, either through what is translated to them, and it can be translated in their spirit, it can be translated openly. Somebody can hear you speaking in tongues, and they can, they can receive the translation, and they themselves translate what is being said and people receive it or it can be it can be translated in an, in, in in quotes into your spirit and you receive the blessing of what is being said but 
to the human ear, to the person coming in off the street, to the person who just walking by and hearing what's going on, they're just hearing noise. It is unfruitful. So, I, my spirit prayed, and there's nothing wrong with your spirit praying, but it is not beneficial to the hearers because it is spiritual. God understands it. God knows what is happening. God sees it. God hears it. And as I said, unless the spirit reveals it, it is not profitable or it's unfruitful. So this is why Paul keeps stressing. He's stressing really that, that look, whatever we're doing, let's pray that we get a revelation. Whatever we are doing, however we are praying, however we are interceding, especially as it relates to being in the sphere of other believers, of, of other persons. Let's not be selfish. Let us pray and let us pray that in the prayer, God will reveal himself and give us all revelation. Let's just not go off into just belief. Because some people, yeah, and it is true. There are some people who are very tongue loose. The first, the, the first two words come out of their mouth is, dear God, and everything else is, and sometimes nobody benefits from that. Nobody benefits. And you can, look here, if you are spirit, if you are spirit filled, you can know when it's, it's just ba 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 ba. You can know, you can know because your spirit testifies inside you. That boy, that just, and sometimes your spirit tell you when it is in excess too. So I'm not here trying, and no, no, I'm not shutting down anybody in this mode. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing that. But, but Paul here is talking about the edifying of the church. The edifying of the church. Because a lot of times, everybody, everybody is doing their thing in the church. And when, when you leave church, ask them what God said to them. They can't tell you. Ask them what God spoke in your spirit. They don't know. Ask, you see them the next two minutes, and they, it is like the same normal old me. No edification. Every time we gather together as Bible believers in the sphere of church, in the sphere of even being here on Zoom, in the sphere of trying to seek God and trying to know more about God, there must be edification. And for there to be edification, something has to be transferred. Something has to be transferred from me to you. Something has to be transferred from you to me. That's how we get edified. So the solution for a public setting, therefore, is, he says it now in the verse after that. Verse 15, what is it then? What's the end conclusion of all of this when it comes to praying publicly? I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. You know, as as I as I say that today, I remember that you know that there are some there are some songs that you sing you're singing it wrong. <laughs> God be the glory. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty too. I'm guilty. I'm, you grow up in church and you hear some song and through, through, through what, you, what you think is the modicum of the noise and the usual uh, terminology of what you're hearing, you say some words that are not that the songwriter said. Yeah. I say, if I can, put it in the chat. Can I get a witness? Put it in the chat. Anyway, let's not go there. So the solution, the solution is pray with the spirit, pray with understanding. Else, uh, verse 16, else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, he, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen? At thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. So 
So the spiritual interaction of the believer is not therefore exercised in the absence of revelation. Revelation must be either immediate or in time revealed and humanly expected. We pray with understanding and we expect an answer. We pray with understanding and we expect an answer. As it relates to praying in tongues, my suggestion is don't, you can never force that. You can't force that. You can't just get up and do it because the spirit doesn't always strive with man. So there are times when you will, you will be, you, you don't always feel at that level because you, you have not been preparing yourself. You, 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 to get into it, praying is similar to, to real deep prayer is similar to getting into the holies of holies. And, to, and, 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 and any, any form of deep divine worship. If you look at the tabernacle, you can understand what God requires of worship. When you are preparing to go into the inner court, the inner, the inner place, the, the, that inner beyond the veil sort of a situation, you don't just gossip. You don't just come up from work and you throw off your, 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 your clothes and you just jump in at the inner court. You prepare like the priest. You prepare, you prepare your mind, you prepare your, your mental, you dress down the, the, the things that you don't need to be to be concerned with. You put things aside. You, 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 you can't be cumbered. You have to quote unquote anoint yourself. Preparation, wash your body, wash it. And I'm talking now from the spiritual perspective. When you begin to move into that place of the inner court, the inner sanctuary, where you're going to touch the throne room of prayer and the throne room of worship, you have to prepare yourself. You don't just jump into that. So nobody can just turn on and turn off prayer language. You, your spirit, your spirit, your spirit. And in fact, it is, it is the, the spirit that is making intercession is what is doing a lot of that work. It is the spirit that is making intercession that is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. That's a modern day term. We'll put it in here. The spirit is doing the heavy lifting of that prayer. That is why you, you can get to that realm that after the, the spirit makes the intercession and it brings the specifics to God and it orders it how it needs to be ordered in accordance to his will and God release the power. You feel the anointing and you start something. Sometimes, sometimes it don't come out loud. Believe me, some people feel it and it's just quiet. They're just going down and they're just quiet, but they know there's something holding them in the quietness. And they're just feeling this, the, the rush and the flush in the quiet. It, I, you can't dictate how that, because if groanings can't be uttered, and that is, that is the high level, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say that because your prayer is loud and expressive that it is meeting, it, it is necessary, heat, eating the high point. No, to each is one. What we pray for is divine revelation. And we pray that we're not praying like, like the, 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 the man who, who, you know, the, the, oh, it go, the publican and the other guy. I don't remember who the other guy was, right? But the other guy was praying like, boy, you know, he's, he's a master class of prayer. And he knows what to order and what to say. And he's, he's not like that guy. You know, I'm not like that guy. I'm not like Sansia. I, I do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Of course, uh, don't Sansia get her blessing long, long time because why? Her spirit of humility approaching the throne room ushered her into the holies of holies long time. You that they are, you're still, you don't reach the gate with that kind of attitude. And God don't even hear what you say. 
So, so, so in our prayer, some of the last things I want to leave with you. First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. And pray without ceasing doesn't mean 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Otherwise, we would not work. We wouldn't pay our bills. We would not go to some places like some people went to some places on the weekend. My God. Uh, so it's not, it's not pray without doing anything else. It's be constantly. Pray frequently. Be involved in your prayer. Let your prayer be prevailing. Let your prayer be uh, meditating. Let your life be uh, 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 an expression of that. Remember, it comes back to, I said it's worship. Prayer, you can't, you can't divorce the two. Prayer and worship go together. Prayer is essential. So pray without ceasing. Prayer without ceasing also means I have to have a particular kind of attitude about what I'm praying about and seeing it through to its fruition. That is where knock and keep on knocking comes into play. In return, it, it regards to, to, to prayer without ceasing, I want to read something from the Ethiopic version. It renders pray frequently. Do not leave off praying or cease from it through the prevalence, to the prevalence of sin, the temptations of Satan, or through discouragement. Because an answer is not immediately had, or through carelessness or negligence, but continue in it and be often at it. See Luke 18, verse 1. These words are opposed to the practice of such who either pray not at all, or having used to it, have left it off, or who only pray in a time of trouble and distress. How many people, you know, you, know, you only pray when bills are due? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I need, I need to pay my bills, God. Heavenly Father. Divine God. You know those folks. You know we got them folks. They pray only when it's distress time. Right? Uh, and they find things hard to bear. So, so, so we, we don't want to operate like that. We want to pray without ceasing and un, we understand the term. So I leave these uh, um, points with you. Something I picked up and then I added to it. So it says, what are the seven steps for prayer? So like the bishop would say, I'm closing for the second time. I'm closing for the second time. Uh, what are the seven steps of prayer? Step one is abide in Christ divine. Abide in Christ divine. V-I-N-E. Sounds strange, but hear why. If you abide in me and my words abide, in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So, so you see, it, it, everything fits together. You know? the, the, the word is all, all encompassing. So you don't just you don't just do certain things and not understand the consequences. So step one is to abide in Christ, because if you abide in Christ, you are able to ask certain things of the Father. If he's your Father, you can't go to him. If a somebody that is not your Father, you can't ask him anything. Number two, pray in faith. Because having faith is a must. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that believeth must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you pray in faith. Because that's how we approach God. Step three, 
stand on God's word. You recognize his authority. I am God and besides me there is no other. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Step four, pray in the spirit. And why we pray in the spirit? Because the spirit helps our infirmities. Because we know not what to pray for as we ought. We don't know the specifics of what to include in our prayer. Neither do we sometimes know when we should be praying. So we pray in the spirit so that the spirit can help us with the weaknesses in our prayer lives. Step five, persevere in prayer. Keep on knocking. Knock and it shall be open. Seek and he shall find. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Step six, use different types of prayer. And now this, this aspect of different types of prayer really has to be governed by our word of God and our knowledge of the word and understanding different prayers that emanate from the word of God. There are different people who throughout, throughout the Bible have prayed different prayers. And we see how God has articulated himself in, in those prayers. Um, God's willing, we will touch on, uh, on, on one of those next week. Step six, step seven, and final, flow in God's love. Flow. F-L-O-W. Flow in God's love. Reason why we should be flowing in God's love. Simple, because we don't want to be overcome with anxiety. We must believe that until the answer comes, when the answer comes, before we had the situation anyway, we are in the love of God. We are, in, we are held by the love of God. So before there was a need for prayer, before there was a need, before God even created a need for us to pray, we had God's love. Why? Because he who he foreknew, he predestinated. We come right back to it. He predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his son. We read that. Let's go back to it. For whom, A29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. If God foreknow you and he predestinated you, look at, look at, look at all the stuff that's happening between foreknowledge and, pre, and, and until predestination. You are kept by the power of God. You are kept by Almighty God. You are in the hands of God, irrespective of what is happening to you, irrespective of what you're going through, irrespective of what's going to happen tomorrow. You are predestined. And God has everything in his hands. So let's pray in the spirit. And let's pray with understanding. The things in your life matters. And you are never a bother to God. When you pray. You are never a bother to God when you pray. God is listening. God is hearing. And he will answer your call. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your words tonight. Thank you, Father, for knowing what we do not know. The spirit in us also knows and testifies for us of the things that are in our hearts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord God, that you will help us, God, to know you more and to know your will more. Lord God, to be in alignment with your will and your purpose for our lives. For us to be, be settled, Lord God, in this will that you have for us. 
knowing that, God, you are accomplishing your work through us according to your divine will. We pray, O oh God, again, that you will open our understanding to prayer. Open our understanding, Lord God, to worship. Open our understanding, Jesus, O oh God, to how to seek you. How to seek you in the morning. How to seek you in the midday. How to seek you in the evening time. Open our understanding, Lord, how for us to know how to pray on behalf of others. So that we are also able to be our brother's keeper in intercession. We pray, Lord God, that you will edify the church. Let us be vessels of edification for your kingdom. So that whatsoever we do in the public domain, that somebody will be benefited because there is a spiritual transfer. Lord God, we thank you. We give you all glory. We give you all praise. We give you all worship. And we bless your name for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.